Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Venom 2 video. Everyone saw this video yesterday of a real life looking Venom symbiote wondering what it is, and of course the Venom movie was using it to get some free marketing for the movie just creating awareness, and mission accomplished, it totally worked. So we'll explain what this is in the history of the symbiote in the comics, because now that we know, Marvel and Sony have confirmed that they're crossing over Tom Holland's Spider-Man with the Venom character eventually, we all wanna know how they're logically going to give Spider-Man the symbiote. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing an Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your theories on the video about how Spider-Man will eventually get the symbiote. So starting with number five, this really weird organism that looks like a real life Venom symbiote isn't actually a symbiote. It didn't lash out and consume these dudes who were poking at it in the video and it didn't turn any of them into real life Venom. Could you imagine if that was the case? That would be the best movie marketing campaign in history. But this organism is real. This isn't some fake thing that someone created. This is called the bootlace worm. The bootlace worm is just a species of ribbon worm that can grow to be really, really big. So this thing here is one single worm just all tangled up with itself writhing around. The way they consume food is actually a little bit like the venom symbiote. They have a little proboscis that they shoot out of their mouth where they catch prey and then bring it back and eat it. And just like the venom symbiotes, they can give off a neurotoxin that neutralizes their prey while they consume it. But number four, as you all probably realized in the first Venom movie talking about its history, instead of adapting the original symbiote saga for the Venom origin story, they actually adapted the origin story from the 1990s Spider-Man animated series cartoon, which is an amazing cartoon. That was one of my favorite series as a kid to watch. But in that version of the story, J. Jonah Jameson's son is a U.S. astronaut out on a mission in space collecting soil samples. One of the soil samples just happens to contain the Venom symbiote. And if it wasn't clear, in the first Venom movie, that really is J. Jonah Jameson's son who's the astronaut that's leading the mission. Which is why it makes more sense that the J. Jonah Jameson character is going to have cameo scenes in Venom 2 in the Morbius movie to connect to the Spider-Man Far From Home post credit scene. During re-entry, the symbiote escapes, crashes the ship, and then Spider-Man, or in the case of the Venom movie, the paramedics arrive on the scene, go to help the survivors, the symbiote jumps to one of them and starts the adventure. If you have not seen the Spider-Man animated series version of that, all those episodes are on Disney Plus right now. But why would Sony adapt the cartoon origin story instead of going for a more comic book version? The biggest reason is because Marvel was in the middle of Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, so Spider-Man was out in outer space, but Kevin Feige didn't want to have to deal with Big Venom crossover at the time. There was already way too much for them to handle with the story of Infinity War. Even though you probably saw some of the concept art of Tom Holland's Iron Spider suit being a little more comic book accurate and a black version of that. So there was a version of a black suit Spider-Man that they thought about doing during Infinity War at one point, but it just wound up being a deleted scene. But it's also because Avia Rod is one of the executive producers on the Venom movies, and he was also an executive producer on that original 90s animated Spider-Man series. When those classic cartoons were airing in the 90s, Avia Rod was in charge of the version of Marvel Studios that existed at that time. The reason the show got canceled was because he got into a big fight with the head of the network at Fox, who was airing the cartoon at the time. So number three, the actual comic book origin story of the Venom symbiote has changed recently thanks to Donny Cates and his run on the Venom series. I know you're all asking about Null, the god of the symbiotes, if they'd ever do that in the movies. I don't know if Sony would ever be able to work up to something like that. That would have to be an absolute carnage movie saga series. It would have to be Sony's version of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So I think maybe someday they hope that they could do something like that, but that's so far off in the distance. We have no idea if that's ever going to happen. The original story of the symbiote is that back in the early 80s, Marvel Comics wanted to get in on more toy licensing, and because they didn't have the big movie franchises that Marvel Studios has today to boost toy sales, they created a big comic book crossover event that we all know as the original Secret Wars. They sold a ton of toys, it worked really well for them, this is the TV ad that they created for it. So it's sort of Marvel Comics trying to get in on the Saturday morning cartoon craze, but doing it with the big comic book crossover. The story of that was that the Beyonder was just fascinated with Earth's heroes and transports them all to his battle world that he created for the purposes of seeing them fight each other to the death to see who the strongest was. Everyone remembers the iconic Spider-Man black suit cover. The story of the Venom symbiote is actually a bit of a retcon because later it was Todd McFarlane that took over the Spider-Man comics and created the Venom character. But originally what happened is that Spider-Man's traditional costume got damaged during that fight in Secret Wars, so he enters one of the Beyonders' bases and sees there's a machine that can repair his suit, 
but instead of repairing it, it straight up gives him a new suit that they call the alien costume. Marvel would typically give heroes new costumes every once in a while to boost comic book sales and boost toy sales. So before the big Secret Wars crossover, Marvel held this big campaign allowing fans to submit their ideas for Spider-Man's quote unquote new costume. They wound up basing the black alien costume on this fan's design with a few minor tweaks. The fan's original idea was that the symbol would be red. Marvel just changed it back to the classic white one. The birth of the Venom symbiote in the Venom character didn't really start till Todd McFarlane took over the Spider-Man comics. He's the one that went back after they got rid of the alien costume and gave it to Eddie Brock, who said that it was actually a living being and called the Venom symbiote. Then he went on to write the very first Venom solo comic book. They did a version of that origin story during the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 3. Kind of funny that they're getting ready for another Spider-Man 3 and Sam Raimi, who directed Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire, is now directing Doctor Strange 2. So it's all come back around. The Easter egg circle is now complete. But just to be clear, Spider-Man is not going to get the symbiote during Marvel's Spider-Man 3. But of course, number two, now that Sony has already changed the backstory of the Venom symbiote in the movies, once Marvel and Sony officially cross over Tom Holland's Spider-Man into the Venom movies, they'll have to change the way Spider-Man eventually gets that symbiote. Because why would you cross Spider-Man over into a Venom movie and not give him the symbiote? And also, just to be clear, Spider-Man is not going to get the Venom symbiote during Venom 2. There might be a Spider-Man cameo in Venom 2 and say like a Venom 2 post credit scene, but it's not going to be a big full-blown Spider-Man crossover. The story of Venom 2 is mostly the origin story of the Carnage symbiote, so they're just kind of starting down the path of crossing Spider-Man over. But Spider-Man wearing the black costume symbiote is one of the most iconic Spider-Man comic book moments. So one of the easier ways to not mess that up completely is to wait till Venom 3 and do that movie as a true Maximum Carnage story with Spider-Man and Venom teaming up to stop Carnage. You just completely separate the symbiote saga of it all in the movies from the Sinister Six saga of it all. I'd much rather have Spider-Man fight the Sinister Six in the movies eventually in his own homemade suit or a new version of a homemade suit that he eventually creates. And you just keep all the Spider-Man symbiote stuff in the Venom movies because they'll keep doing Venom in the Sony movies. He's their most popular character aside from Tom Holland's Spider-Man right now. And Spider-Man is eventually going to have to come back to the MCU movies proper after his big Venom crossover. So they'll have to give the symbiote back to Eddie Brock before he does that. Which is why, number one, I think that Spider-Man, when he does eventually get the symbiote, will only be for part of a single movie. And since they've already done the Night Monkey black stealth suit, then in the future, Spider-Man could just have a black cloth suit that he creates after he wears the symbiote as a way to still have a super badass looking black suit and just hang it on the shelf next to all his other suits. Like in his cluttered little room in Aunt May's apartment, he has all those different suits just lying around. And here's the thing, everyone wants to know when Venom is going to get that white Spider-Man symbol from the comics. They can have the symbiote create the symbol on Eddie after it bonds with Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man wears the symbiote, then after he's done wearing the symbiote, the symbiote goes back to Eddie and keeps the Spider-Man symbol on its chest. But early prediction, that's probably not going to be till Venom 3 or some other spin-off movie that they do together. Because I'm sure that whatever that Spider-Man Venom crossover is going to be, they're going to want to put Spider-Man in the title of the movie. But they also have all that Sinister Six stuff that they're setting up separately. There is a Spider-Man 4 that Marvel will wind up making per what Sony is saying. But we don't know if Spider-Man 4 is going to be their Sinister Six movie or if it's going to be their big Venom crossover movie or if that'll be some other movie. So everyone just leave all your theories in the comments below. How are they going to cross over Spider-Man with Venom and how are they going to give Spider-Man the symbiote eventually? There's a lot of rumors that there's going to be a Venom 2 trailer sometime soon. If they do wind up posting that, of course I'll do an Easter egg video, but leave all your Venom video requests in the comments below. Marvel just announced a bunch of huge changes to all of their Marvel Phase 4 movies. Click here to learn about all those changes and click here for my brand new X-Men Marvel teaser from Disney+. Plus. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.